Hiya, this video is there to help you to understand the multiple choice questions in AQA AS Unit 1 Economics. The paper is from 12th of January 2012. Question number one is a pretty straightforward question. We know that four factors of production are labor, capital, land and enterprise. Therefore, the answer is enterprise. In question number two, the economy is operating at full capacity, that is the PPF. Let's say we are operating on point A, the public goods manufactured are here and the private good manufacturers are here. So to increase the public goods to reach point B on the PPF, we will have to give up private goods. Hence, the answer is point B or answer B. In question number three, the OPEC has reduced the uh, production of crude oil by nearly a million barrels. So we can see over here the supply curve has moved inwards or shifted inwards. And there is a movement on the demand curve from here to there. You can see the rise in the prices and the fall in quantity demanded. So this is movement along the demand curve. The answer is C. In question number four, the government has put the minimum price at 15 pounds and it is being able to sell to the foreign country for five pounds. So the government is taking a loss or the, bearing the cost of 10 pounds and there is an excess supply of 10 million units. So to work out the total loss, 10 pounds times 10 million will give us 100 million. The answer is B. In question number five, we are being asked about the price elasticity of supply. We know by the formula that percentage change in quantity supplied upon percentage change in price. So the answer is price. Question number six, you're looking for complete market failure it is normally for pure public goods like defense where the markets are missing as the markets will not be able to supply as it is too expensive to buy. So there is a missing market in the provision of public goods. The specialization requires the existence of a system of exchange. For example, we have teachers and dentists. So if a teacher goes to the dentist who is a specialist uh, to look after your teeth, you should be able to pay him by money. And similarly, if the dentist kid goes to the teacher for private tuition, should be able to pay for the services using money. So a system of exchange is needed for specialization. Economies of scale, I've given you the diagram over here. Output, cost, and we can say economies of scale, EOS, diseconomies of scale minimum efficient point <coughs> big firms benefits from economies of scale such as bulk discounts in this case uh, the specialist managers can provide better supervision so you're talking about increasing productivity so the answer is C in question number nine the demand curve is highly inelastic the inward movements of the supply curve due to rise in wages which is the rise uh, or you could say cost push inflation so we can see the price goes up. The answer is A. In question number 10, uh, good Y and good X are substitutes of each other. Uh, we can see from that that the good X, the moment the price falls down is from P1 to P2, and the demand for good Y decreases from D1 to D2. Why? Because the moment the price falls down, the demand for good X increases from Q1 to Q2. So it is a competitive demand. Question number 11 is something similar to question number 10, that the uh, cross elasticity of demand for substitutes is always positive. We can have a look at the formula XED plus over plus. So plus divided by plus will give you positive. In question number 12, the good has uh, the negative income elasticity of demand, so it is an inferior good. To work it out, minus 60, because the demand has fallen down by 60%, so it's minus 60, divided by 20% increase in income levels, will give you a minus 3. In question number 13, I've used the process of elimination to say, for example, if you don't know the answer, what you could do is you can start eliminating the points which you know are not the answer. Uh, so in this case, A is not the answer because subsidy would decrease the cost. B is not the answer because no pollution, no social cost is zero. <coughs> uh, C, sorry, is not the answer, has no negative externalities. Uh, 
No negative externalities in green energy, so D is the answer. In question number 14, it's a mathematical question. All it says is in, if the market price is accounting for the external cost or the externalities. So in product A, 10 plus 2, 12 quid. So 100% of this 2 pounds is accounted for, so there is no money left over. In product B, 12 plus 5 is 17. So <coughs> but it's 15. So we know that 3 pounds has been accounted for. 3 of 5 is 60%. Similarly, 16, 7, 22. So we know that this 6 pounds of 7 pounds is accounted in the market price. So 6 over 7 is 85%, nearly 85%. And then part D, uh, 22 plus 8 should be 30, but we've got 24. So 2 pounds of the externality has been taken into account. 2 pounds of 8 is 25%. So as D only takes 25%, which is lower than all the other three products, is the answer. Question number 15, straightforward, A is the answer. Question number 16, D is the answer. Why? Because <coughs> there is a change in status paribus. Due to recession, the demand has fallen down from D1 to D2. Uh, means excess supply because of the recession. So uh, price will fall and there will be less production due to lower price and the suppliers will stop producing more because price as a signal, signaling mechanism and if they are getting less prices for the products they will not produce they're not incentivized to produce more question number 17 straightforward question we know a positive statement can be tested for example London congestion charge has reduced traffic uh, this can be tested by looking at the figures <coughs> question number 18 is more about complementary products because if you look the price of good X has fallen down by a pound the quantity demanded for X has gone up by 4 units. The quantity demanded for Y has gone up by 12 units. So how do we find our cross elasticity of demand? Change in quantity demanded of Y over change in price of X. So 12 over 30 times 100 over the price has fallen down by minus 1 over 10 times 100, which is plus 40 over minus 10, minus 4 when you solve it. In question number 19, C is the answer. A good example is education as a married good, which is part provided by the independent sector. And uh, same for dental services. And we know married goods are underconsumed and underproduced. So it's a partial market failure. Question number 20. Uh, we know PPF is the productive capacity of an economy. In other words, if we are working on the uh, PPF, we are achieving uh, productive efficiency. In question number 21, this is the indirect tax, H and K. That's the tax borne by the consumers. FE is the tax borne by the uh, producers. And the total government income would be GEHK. In question number 22, again, a good is excludable if it is possible to prevent someone from enjoying its benefits. For example, the motorways is a public good. But congestion on M25 or M1, etc., will exclude other cars to be in that space. Question number 23. Um, again, law of demand. If price decreases, quantity demanded increases. Or if price increases, QD falls. We can see over here with this diagram, the price has decreased and the QD has increased. Or if we say vice versa, if price goes up, QD falls down. So it's an inverse relationship. In question number 24, at the point OX, we know MSC is equal to MSB. So externalities have been accounted for is the optimal point of production. So B is the answer. Again, in question number 25, what I've done is I've used process of elimination. And what I've said in, in A, healthcare does have a private mark provided by private uh, operators such as Bupa, which you can pay for private health insurance. Education, uh, if you have a minimum price, still, it is too expensive for some and people will not consume, so it cannot be corrected. Uh, merit good, petrol is not a merit good, it's a demerit good as it's overproduced and overconsumed. Hence, D is the answer. I've also given the uh, example of moving to a cleaner technology. Good luck. Thank you.